بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم About 20 years ago I read more or less story about a story of a Da'ya and the revert in the United States. An Arab Da'ya, I forgot his name now, he was having like a tour in the United States. So it seems he was very famous, very well known and very impressive, subhanAllah. And they used to gather thousands, you know, in big theaters. You know, 20 years ago, no social media, no that satellites, so really the people they used to appreciate and they would gather in thousands for such big ulama. So he was a alim and a da'iyah. So in one of the events, in one of the states in the United States, he was giving a speech for thousands. Out of a sudden, someone just stopped him and said, Ya Sheikh, laqqin fulana al shahada. He said, Ya Sheikh, that man would love to revert to Islam, please give him the shahada. He want to take the shahada in the middle of his talk. And looked where they were pointing, so it was a white American. And he would love to convert or to revert to Islam. Which one? <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking. Jackalah. <laughs> <laughs> so he looked at that white American, he asked him to come to the theater in front of everyone. It seems that Alim and Da'ya used to have a good experience with those people. He did not want just to celebrate immediately by saying, Yalla, repeat after me, Allah, Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, ah, I bear witness. No, no, he said, before I help you to say the Shahada, may you please tell everyone why you decided to become a Muslim? Because always, always there is a very, very valuable, precious story behind it. Because when someone, an outsider, decides to come to a religion which is attacked by the mainstream media and the image is completely corrupted, there is definitely something huge behind it. So look to this his story and focus with me. It's one of the amazing stories. He said, I'm a multi-millionaire and I have many companies. And as an American, I have the American passport. And you can imagine, just name it, I have not left on the face of earth any type, kind of pleasure, but I did it. However, never ever in my life I felt happy. Multi-millionaire, many companies, American passport, and you know what an American passport for a white American means on earth. Simply he can go wherever, whenever, and most likely, even if he did whatever, most likely, no accountability. Because Uncle Sam is backing him. So you can see basically how the amazing freedom he was enjoying. Yet, with all type of pleasure, Traveling, having, drinking, eating, girlfriend, something, you know, jet skiing, dive skiing, whatever. Okay, swimming, diving, nothing, no, no happiness. He said, I went to many psychiatrists. I thought of suicide to kill myself many times. However, one of the things that used to bother me and used to kill me that I used to have and focus now. I used to have in my headquarters a very simple worker. I think he said he used to be like an office boy. A very poor Indian Muslim. Works in my company. All the time he's smiling. All the time. Even though he was one of the poorest and had the least of the salaries, yet he was the only one who's smiling all the time. And smiling all the time means what? Happy. By the way, I can smile for a while, hypocritically. I can smile for the social communications. I can, for example, press my, the muscles of my cheek in your face. If I know that, okay. I can't keep it like this. I will have a stiff in the muscles of my cheeks. I have to go to my nature. 
but all the time I'm smiling it means from inside I'm happy he said I used to have a problem I always kept comparing between myself and this poor Indian Muslim in my company I always to have in my inner discussion I am the American I am the multimillionaire who's having such and such I'm not happy this poor Indian Muslim all the time he's happy he said even though I felt he had something I need but my arrogance prevented me I'm the American how come I will go down to look because you know he admitted that he was a racist he admitted that he was an arrogant because he's white American very rich and he was looking down to this Indian poor Muslim said okay I, I felt he had something but there's a big obstacle between me and him I can't go and ask him I can't show him that I need something from him he said at a certain point when I had the following thoughts okay I said I thought many times to kill myself if I accepted killing myself why not to accept with to sit with this Indian Muslim maybe so I decided to speak with him I called him to my office and I asked him this simple question why you are always smiling he said because I'm a Muslim he said hey don't waste my time what do you mean by Muslim he said because I'm happy because I'm a Muslim he said are you claiming that every Muslim is always happy that one said not necessarily but every Muslim who understands Islam and live Islam definitely is happy he said how come look what he said now non-educated simple humble poor Indian Muslim who used to have a very simple humble salary built his life on the following philosophy he said my prophet Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu telling the American he said told us in a hadith and he quoted the following hadith I will say it in Arabic for Arabs because you recognize it then I will translate it قال عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله له خير إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له وليس ذلك لأحد إلا للمؤمن he said look my prophet told me our prophet told us that now prophet Muhammad quoting saying I'm wondering for the status of the believer how beautiful and wonderful it is if he was under the trial and Allah sent to him happiness pleasure easiness goodness khayr, blessings he will be thankful and he will be rewarded however if Allah decided to put him under trial and he was under hardship difficulties challenges something that he hates he does not want obstacles whatever he will be patient and he will be rewarded <laughs> in both sides he will be rewarded sabr or shakir then he continued he said قال وامورنا Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم continued قال وليس ذلك لاحد الا للمؤمن and it's just for the believer because of the faith this way does not work except with the believer because they are on the base of faith of ajr and tawab in the akhirah otherwise it's a nonsense it's a waste of time it's a craziness if you don't believe you are just wasting your time then this poor Indian Muslim continues to the American he said وَأُمُورُنَا فِي الْحَيَاةِ بَيْنَ السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ and actually our life it's just two parts either or either sarra easiness goodness blessings or darra which means hardships difficulties whatever so in this case be accept and be satisfied with Allah be thankful you will be rewarded be patient you will be rewarded he said why not to be happy he was shocked he said I was shocked how simple easy powerful the way that he built his life on this simple humble person and he decided to become a Muslim now look this poor Indian Muslim was so simple and humble to degree that he was not able to help him to give him the Shahada no education <laughs> he said no I don't know what to say how to say it how to show you I will bring you to 
you know, another. And it happened just by the will of Allah, which linguistically we say coincidentally, that gathering was taking place. He brought him to that place. The story is finished. Now, then he finished his story in the theater. Then that da'i asked that white American to say the shahada. And you know, ashhadu ashhadu Allah la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Once he finished, he started crying deeply from his heart. To a degree, some people, they were afraid that he might face something. It was not, not a normal crying. The people wanted to come just to calm him down. They said, leave him, let him cry, let him. He kept crying for minutes. Minutes crying on the theater. People, all of them by silent, is crying, crying, crying. The da'iyah had a good experience. It seems he saw this before. Said, may you tell us why you were crying? And here I finish my talk. He said, I felt the first time that a burden like mountains on my shoulders, I have just get rid of them now. <laughs> mountains, my shoulders. When I said the shahada, alhamdulillah, I'm released. The story is finished. By the way, believe it or not, I highlighted this story not for the revert and not for the white American. Do you know who's my hero? The Indian Muslim. This is my point. The Indian Muslim. He was not educated. No high degree. No perfect language. No money. No prestige, no connections, nothing. But he was the reason by force for one who is used to be racist, used to think he's an upper hand, very rich, look at him down, yet he was the reason for him to be taken to the Jannah. Why? Simply because of faith, sincerity. Faith sincerity this is the best of what he had but he was living islam this simple smile caused this allahu a'lam this multi-millionaire when he became a muslim what did he do everything of khair will be done and what will happen later will be in the scale of hasanat of that simple humble poor indian muslim what was the reason smile why the smile because the understanding of the hikmah, the wisdom of Allah in our intihan, trial in this dunya simply, and the rida, satisfaction with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordinates. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all of us inshallah to be a true Muslims and to live truly Islam happily and we will be influencing everyone inshallah around us. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.